In the last video, we did a Hohmann transfer problem where we went from a circular orbit about Earth to a larger circular orbit about Earth. In the last video, I had already pre-calculated the two delta Vs from the two burns and gave that to you. Now in this video, we're also going to be going from a smaller circular orbit to a larger circular orbit using a Hohmann transfer. But in this video, I'm not going to give you the delta Vs. We're actually going to solve for those using GMAT. Let's get to it. For the first step, let's go ahead and start the GMAT application. So look for a shortcut like this. When you start it up, it's going to open up the welcome page. You can go ahead and click that X in the top right to close the welcome page. Next step, we're going to go ahead and start a new mission. If you already had GMAT open and was working on something else, you can click this new mission button up on the toolbar. When you click that, it's going to do this pop-up that asks if you really want to load the default mission. Go ahead and click yes. And when you do that, you'll see here on the left in the resources tab, all of the stuff turned into the uh, the default stuff. So you got the default spacecraft, the default propagator, the default orbit view. So we're going to go ahead and leave the default spacecraft and the default propagator with their default values. The default orbit for the spacecraft is near circular, so we're just going to go ahead and use that one for this red smaller circular orbit. And then the default prop is just the standard propagator about Earth and, you know, it has its gravity model and all that. So it's going to be good enough for this example. And so we're going to just go ahead and leave those with their default values. Now let's go ahead and double click on the default orbit view to adjust some of the parameters or properties of the orbit viewer. We're just wanting to make a couple of quick changes so that the camera is already pointed in the right direction when we run the simulation. We don't have to play around with moving it a whole lot. So let's go here on the bottom left to the view definition. What we're going to do is we're going to change this viewpoint vector. The first one we're going to change to zero from 30,000. And then the last one we're going to change to 120,000 from zero. Those are the X and the Zs. When you're done with that, underneath it, under the view up definition, change it from axis Z to axis X and click OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the first burn maneuver. This would take place when we're trying to go from the red parking orbit to the purplish transfer orbit that you see here on the left. To do that, right click on the burns folder and then find add and click impulsive burn. The difference between an impulsive burn and a finite burn is that an impulsive burn is just going to give you the entire delta V instantaneously. That has the effect of when the burn occurs of changing from the red parking orbit to the purple transfer orbit instantly versus a finite burn where, I don't know, for example, you might start the burn and it takes 30 seconds to achieve the entire delta V. So click impulsive burn and you'll see it show up in the left tree. Let's go ahead and rename this burn object. If you right click where it says impulsive burn in the tree, it will pop up this context menu and you can find the item that says rename. Go ahead and click that. That will open up this window here where you can type in the new name you want to call it and click OK. For this example, I'm just going to call this the transfer orbit insertion. This is where we're inserting the spacecraft into the transfer orbit. So when you click OK, you'll see that it has the new name there in the resources tab on the left. All right, let's go ahead and create the second burn object. So again, right click on the burns folder, go to add and click impulsive burn. When you do that, you'll see it appear in the resources tab on the left right here named impulsive burn one. Again, we're going to go ahead and rename this object that we just created. So right click where it says impulsive burn and in the menu that pops up, click rename. And that window that pops up, type in final orbit insertion and click OK. This is going to be the second burn that we use to go from the transfer orbit into the final orbit. So that's why we call it final orbit insertion. After you type in that name, click OK, and you'll see it there on the left in the resources tab. The final resource that we need to add to our project is a differential corrector. This is going to be used by the solver that we're going to be setting up to figure out what the delta Vs are. 
I'm not going to go into it too much on this video. It might be a good topic for another video to explain what it is and what we use it for, but let's just go ahead and add it to this project. So click the little plus sign to expand the solvers folder and in there you'll see boundary value solvers. If you right click on that, there will be a context menu that pops up. So go ahead and hover over the add and then on the next menu that pops up, click differential corrector. When you do that, you'll see that it added it to the resources tab on the left. It's right there named DC1. All right, so we've gone ahead and created all the objects that we needed on the resources tab. So let's go ahead and click over to the mission tab and we're gonna start building out our mission sequence, right? What are the order of the events that is going to occur with the objects we created? You'll see that it already has the default propagate one in it. Let's go ahead and rename that to parking orbit. So right click on it and the menu that pops up, click rename. In that window that pops up, type parking orbit and click OK. And then you'll see that the name changed in the mission tab on the left. Next, we're going to double click on parking orbit in the mission sequence to open up its properties window. And we're going to go to the stopping condition and change it from elapsed seconds. So click on the three dots next to the elapsed seconds and you'll see this next window pop up. And there you're going to find periapsis. Make sure that the central body is on Earth. Click the right arrow to move it to the selected values and click OK. That's going to change the stopping condition to when the spacecraft reaches periapsis. After you see that pop-up window go away, you'll see that the stopping condition has been changed to periapsis. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the checkbox here to override the color for this particular segment of the mission. And I'm going to change that to red to match this diagram that I have here on the left. After I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK to save the changes to the parameters of this parking orbit. Now we're going to start getting into how we set up GMAT to solve our problem. What we're going to do is we're going to start by adding a target to the mission sequence after parking orbit. So right click on parking orbit and in the menu that pops up, click insert after. And in the menu that pops up after that, click target. When you do that, you'll see in the mission sequence a target and end target appear in the tree. Let's go ahead and rename this target to home and transfer orbit. So right click in the emission sequence where it says target one and in the menu that appears, click rename. In the window that appears after that, type in home and transfer orbit and click OK. And when you do that, you should see that the name of it has changed in the mission sequence from target one to home and transfer orbit. Now, before I fill in this home and transfer orbit with what I need to solve the problem, I'm going to go ahead and just finish filling out the general structure of our mission sequence by putting in the final orbit now. After the solver figures out the first and second burns, there's really not much else we need to solve for. So that final orbit can just be the normal propagation orbit that we've done before. So right click where it says end home and transfer orbit and in the menu that appears click insert after and then in the next menu that appears click propagate and when you do that you'll see a propagate 2 has appeared in the mission sequence on the left after our home and transfer orbit. Let's go ahead and rename this propagate to final orbit. So in the mission sequence right click on propagate 2 and the menu that appears click rename. In the window that appears, type in final orbit and click OK. And when you do that, you'll see that the name has changed in the mission sequence on the left. Go ahead and double click on final orbit in the mission sequence to open up its properties window. And we're going to change the stopping condition. We basically just want something large enough to do a full orbit so that we can see the entire circle. So let's just go ahead and change the stopping condition to 120,000. That should be at least a full orbit, I'd guess. So after changing the elapsed seconds, I'm going to also double click this checkbox to override the color and then click on this box over here on the right and find a similar color to the diagram I've been using on the left. And then click OK when you're done updating the final orbit parameters. All right, let's go back to the home and transfer orbit and start adding in all the pieces we need to solve our problem. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on Home in Transfer Orbit and in the menu that appears we're going to click Append and in the menu that appears after that we're going to click Vary and you'll see that a Vary 1 appears inside this Home in Transfer Orbit object in the mission sequence. Next we're going to right click on Vary 1 and the menu that appears we're going to click Rename in the window that appears, we're going to click Very TOI, that stands for Transfer Orbit Insertion, and then click OK. When you do that, you should see that the name changed to Very TOI in the mission sequence on the left. Now let's double click on Very TOI in the mission sequence on the left to update its parameters. When that parameters window pops up, you'll see that the solver we added before pops up here at the top, the DC1. Just go and leave that there. The next thing you need to do is to double check that the right variable is going to be varied. So where it says variable, you want to make sure it says transfer orbit insertion dot element one. If you remember, the burn was in the V and B coordinate system, which stands for velocity, normal, and, and I think binormal. So by saying that the variable is element one, we're saying that we want to vary the V in the V and B of our transfer orbit insertion burn. Next, we're going to update these boxes you see here, and we're going to specify how we want it to vary. So go ahead and make sure your values match what I have here. That is an initial value of 1, a perturbation of 0 0.0001, a lower value of 0, an upper value of 3.14159, and a max step of 0 0.2. A lot of these should be the default values, so you might only have to change one or two of the values. When you're done updating the very TOI parameters, go ahead and click OK. Next, we're going to be appending a maneuver to the home and transfer orbit. So right click on home in transfer orbit and click append in the menu. And in the menu that appears after that, click maneuver. When you do that, you should see that a maneuver one object has been added inside the home and transfer orbit object. Right click on maneuver one and in the menu that appears, click rename. In the window that appears, click perform TOI and click OK. TOI stands for transfer orbit insertion, of course. After you click OK, you should see that it has been renamed to perform TOI in the mission sequence. Next, we're going to double click on the perform TOI to update its properties. So in the parameters window that appears, make sure that the burn that is specified is transfer orbit insertion and click OK. Next, we're going to append propagate to the home and transfer orbit. So right click and find append and then choose propagate and you'll see that a propagate has been added in the mission sequence after the perform TOI object. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this propagate object. So right click on it and in the menu that appears, click rename. In the window that appears, go ahead and rename this to go to apoapsis and click OK. If you look at the mission sequence, you should see that the name has been updated. Now this go to apoapsis object is representing the purplish home and transfer orbit. So let's go ahead and change its parameters. Double click on it in the mission sequence and then in the stop condition, I click the three little circles on the left to open up this dialog box here. In that dialog box, go ahead and make sure that the object selected is the default spacecraft. We want to propagate it to apoapsis of the central body being Earth. We'll click on the right arrow to make sure that it is the selected value and then click OK. And we'll see that the stopping condition for this has been changed to apoapsis. Now I'm also going to double click the override color and find a pinkish, purplish, uh, whatever color that is to match the diagram I have on the left. After you're done making changes to the parameters, go ahead and click OK. The next thing we're going to do is right click on Home and Transfer Orbit and in the menu that appears, click Append. In the menu that appears after that, click Achieve down there at the bottom and you'll see that an object named Achieved1 has been added to the mission sequence. Right click on Achieve1 and in the menu that appears, click Rename. In the window that appears after that, we're going to rename this to Achieve RM8. 
a g right that's our magnitude and click OK and you'll see that the name has changed in the mission sequence on the left let's go ahead and update the parameters of this achieve object so double click on achieve r m a g in the mission sequence on the left in the parameters window that appears, we're going to make sure that the goal is the R magnitude of the spacecraft in reference to the Earth. If this is something different on yours, you're going to need to click the edit button on the right and change it. And so the value that we want to achieve of the R magnitude for that is 42,164.169 kilometers. So go ahead and type that in and click OK. Now, I've added a few things to this menu without talking much about what they're trying to do. Let's pause for a moment and look at some of these extra objects and really understand what they're trying to do. If you look at the general outline of the final mission sequence here on the left, you'll notice that it has a lot of the same elements of our last video. But you'll notice there's other stuff here in the sequence as well. There's this very TOI object and this achieve RMAG object. These are what's being used to solve this problem for us. The very TOI is going to choose an initial value for the transfer orbit insertion burn, right, the delta V. Then it's going to perform that burn here where it says perform TOI. Then it's going to propagate on the purple axis where it says go to apoapsis. And then here where it says achieve R mag, it's going to look to see what is the R magnitude I'm at for this initial value that I chose in this very. Of course, the initial value isn't a high enough delta V to get to the R magnitude we want. And so the loop starts over. This very TOI says, okay, I need to add a little bit more to this burn, right? This delta V. Let me add a little bit more. I'll propagate to apoapsis on this purple orbit. And then let me check my R magnitude again. It checks it. It says, oh, no, nope, it's not enough. I need to add more to it. So the loop starts over. And it's going to do this until A, it hits that final upper limit value in the very TOI. Or what we hope to happen is it's going to stop when it actually hits the R magnitude we specified in that achieve R mag. Now what's really cool is that when we hit the simulate button for the first time, you will actually see this purple orbit expanding out like this until it achieves that R magnitude and then it's going to move on. So pay close attention to when we're simulating this for the first time to see this purple transfer orbit expand out like this. Okay, so we went ahead and put in the objects we needed for the first burn and figuring out the first burn. Let's move on to the second burn. So let's go ahead and start by right clicking on home and transfer orbit and clicking append and then clicking vary and you should see vary 2 appear in the mission sequence. Let's go ahead and rename vary 2. So find it in the mission sequence on the left and right click on it. In the menu that appears, click rename. In the window that appears after that, type in very FOI, that stands for very final orbit insertion. And when you're done typing that, go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that the name has changed in the mission sequence. Let's go ahead and double click on very FOI in the mission sequence to edit its properties. When you do that, the window will appear. And the first thing we're going to check is that the variable is what we want it to be. As you can see here, it defaulted to transfer orbit insertion element one. So we want to click the edit button so that we can change that. In the object list, click final orbit insertion. In the object property, click element one. Then hit the right arrow to add it to the selected values and click OK. After you've made that change, you should see that it has updated what is shown here as the variable. The next step is to change the parameters for how we want to vary this variable. And this is just going to specify, for instance, like the initial value we're starting at or the step we're taking or what's the lower and upper limits. So go ahead and make sure that what you have matches what I have here on the screen for these five boxes. After that, go ahead and click OK to save the changes to the parameters. Let's go ahead and add another maneuver object to the mission sequence. So right click on Hohmann Transfer Orbit. In the menu that appears, hover over Append. And in the menu that appears after that, find and click on Maneuver. 
and you'll see that that will add another maneuver object to the mission sequence. Go ahead and right click on maneuver two and in the menu that appears, click rename. In the window that appears after that, go ahead and type perform FOI. It stands for final orbit insertion. When you're done typing that, click OK, and you should see the name change in the mission sequence on the left. Let's go ahead and double click on Perform FOI to edit its properties. In the window that appears, let's just go ahead and make sure that Burn is specified as Final Orbit Insertion Burn. After you've made the change, go ahead and click OK. Now we added a very object, so we need to add a corresponding Achieve object. So right click on the home and transfer orbit and in the menu that appears find append and then in the menu that appears after that find achieve and that will add an achieve object as you can see here in the mission sequence. Let's go ahead and rename that achieve object. In the mission sequence find the new achieve object and right click on it. In the menu that appears find and click on rename. In the window that appears after that, go ahead and type in Achieve ECC and click OK. ECC, of course, stands for Eccentricity. You should see that the name has changed in the mission sequence. Next, let's double click on Achieve ECC in the mission sequence to open up its properties window. And what we're going to do is we're going to change what the goal of the Achieve is. So click the edit button on the right to open up the parameter selection dialog box. And what we're going to do is with the default spacecraft object selected, we're going to find the object property of eccentricity in the menu. Make sure that the central body is Earth. Then we're going to click on the right arrow to save that as the selected value and click OK. After you've done that, you should see that the goal has changed in the parameters window to say default spacecraft.earth.ecc. With the goal being changed, let's go ahead and change what value that we're trying to hit of that goal, right? And so that value is going to be 0.005 with a tolerance of 0.0001. So after you updated the value and tolerance, go ahead and click OK. So we talked a little bit about what the very TOI and Achieve RMAG does in the mission sequence, but you should notice that we've essentially created another loop here with the very FOI and the Achieve ECC. Essentially what we're doing is we are using the very FOI object to change the amount of delta V that this perform FOI object does in the mission sequence with the goal of reaching that eccentricity that we specified in the achieve object. And so this is going to create a loop around this second burn object where it's going to have an initial delta V. It's going to perform that burn with that delta V and see if that achieves the eccentricity. If it doesn't, well, then it's going to add a little bit more and then perform the burn, see if it achieves eccentricity. And it's just going to kind of go in that loop until it either achieves the goal or reaches the max number of iterations or reaches the limits. All right, we're done making changes and updating both the objects and the events that we want to occur. And so now comes the point where we want to actually run our project to simulate the mission sequence. So to run the simulation, you have the buttons here in the toolbar. You've got the play button. There's the pause button and stop button. Uh, and so if you hit play, then you'll notice that these two windows appear inside of the workspace area and those appear because we had them in the outputs folder right we had a default orbit viewer that we just did the properties for then we had the default ground track plot after the simulation has finished running we're actually able to animate the results to see the satellite travel over the ground track plot or to see the satellite orbit around the earth to visualize the mission sequence and we'll check that on the next slide. But real quick, there's also here on the top right, this GUI modified. This simply means that you've made changes to the script file using this GUI, but you haven't saved it yet. So before you close out of any of this, after you're done checking out the results, make sure that you save it if that's what you're wanting to do. So let's go ahead and check out the results when we run our simulation. 
So click the big play button towards the top and you'll see two windows appear. This window on the top has some information in it in terms of what are the control variables that we're changing, right? What's its current value? What was the last value? What difference between them do you see? Has another section below that for all of the achieved objects, right? What is our goal? What are we at? What kind of difference do we have? And then you'll see at the very bottom of this top window, it has a little status bar that changes color along with the words there, right? It's got like a green to say that it converged or a red and says it didn't converge or a blue that says it's iterating. And of course, on this bottom window here is the orbit view. And you can see the HOMA transfer actually stretches out as it tries to achieve that arm magnitude until it finally figures out what value it needs. And then you'll see that orange orbit up here. So this is really cool, right? If we don't know some parameters of our mission sequence or of our orbit or whatever, we can actually figure it out based on other parameters and using GMAT as a solver to find our answer. Now, when I originally tried to run this, I actually got an error and it didn't work. The error I got was something about saving to the output folder. Now, this is a common error with my installation of GMAT. You know, anytime I try to save out to a report file or take a snapshot or a screenshot, and now with the report for the differential corrector, I think it has to do with the permissions. And since this is installed in the C drive, it needs admin privileges to modify the folder. So I might have to go play with the settings. But if you're getting a similar issue, there is a workaround. There's actually two workarounds. If you double click on DC1 to open up the differential corrector properties, you can either uncheck this box right here and what that's going to do is turn off trying to write out to a report file. It also means that you're going to not see any of these messages in the bottom status bar as it tries to solve it. The other option is to write out the full path of the report file to a location that you have permissions to write to. And then you can leave this show progress on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you liked it, you want to see more of this type of content, don't forget to hit like to tell the YouTube algorithm that this is some good content. I'll catch you in the next video.